I'm from the southeast, so this may be uh, sacrilegious, but barbecue is pork to me. It's not beef. Um, and so I grew up only eating pork, and, and so I always, like, I can't, until Bonnie teaches me how to make a pork butt on a big green egg, I don't know how to do that very well. Um, and so uh, I do it in my crock pot, which is totally cheating, but I cannot, I don't know how to grill very well. Okay. So you have this one to sample today. I used yellow onion. I'm just telling you so you, when you, if you want to repeat it, you'll know exactly what I did. Okay, raw sugar. This is, I use this a lot. This is what this is. I don't know how to pronounce it, De Demerara. I never, I'm not a, I always read it, but I don't say it. But this is what it looks like. And you can just get this at Brookshire's or Walmart. it's just regular sugar? It is, but it's more in, it's in the, the, the raw state before they refine it and okay. process it. It's kind of like, uh, for lack of a better, like whole wheat bread versus white bread, or whatever. Um, and sometimes it's called turbinado sugar. Um, and so that's what, sugar is sugar, I mean, you know, but this is a little bit healthier version of it. Um, I, it just looked like brown sugar. That's yeah, no, but it, it, sure. it's more crystal-like. You see, and you can, oh, okay. The reason why mine's clumping is, um, Someone put it in the refrigerator and it doesn't go in the refrigerator. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Someone, it wasn't me. Um, but anyway, and so this one I followed just pretty much exactly like you see. I did use three teaspoons of the Chipotle. Do y'all all know what that looks like? I brought it just to show you. Okay. And I can't, I'm, I'm really bad at pronouncing things. Chipotle. 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 Yeah. Chipotle. We didn't have these in Mississippi. I was glad I went to Baylor. I'd never eaten Mexican food, and like my first day there, I went to eat. I didn't know a soul at school, and I went to eat um, with people. You know, I was 17, and I ordered. I said, well, "I'll have a fajita." But what are we to eat? <laughs> and so I, I love Mexican food. Now it's my comfort food, but I'm still terrible at pronouncing Chipotle or whatever. Okay, um, this is a Chipotle is a smoked jalapeno. That's all it is. It's a jalapeno that's been smoked, and you can buy them dry and re. Uh, constitute them like you would a sun-dried tomato, but I use it like this because most recipes they call for it like this in adobo sauce, and that's just tomato sauce. That's all that is. Um, does, they're hot. Does it make it spicy or it hot? Taste? Yeah, yeah. So you can leave it out. You totally. Yeah, and, and this might be a little hot because I did use three teaspoons, but you, three teaspoons. Maybe it would take me six months to use this jar in cooking because it's, I think it's hot. I mean, Chipotles are really hot to me, you know, but, um, but it does give good flavor. You probably know the flavor and don't even know you know the flavor because it's distinctive, um, but it's just kind of a smoky, hot flavor. But anyway. Tabasco also makes, <coughs> they have a Chipotle Tabasco oh, they do. that you can use instead of that. Yeah, really, interchangeably. I don't, I mean, I, mean, more, I, I do. do yeah, cool. Well, that would make it easier. Yeah. Just, shh, yeah, versus, I was chopping, you know, little... They're, they're real messy and seedy, and you know you have to pull one out, and it looks like a... I'll admit it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like, if you don't like spicy, it don't even go there. Um, but I do like Tabasco. Okay, so that's it. Uh, if you're going to serve this, um, like little sliders, sandwiches, um, little pulled pork tacos, just like you would barbecue. Um, but I just brought some for you the same. Okay, vegetarian lasagna. It's really self-explanatory. Um, you don't have to cook the noodles ahead of time. That's... That's Yay. one of my favorite parts. Yes. Um, now this one is it's very um, important to make sure those their, the noodles are you know do have liquid around it or whatever because um, they will dry out just that and, and the whole wheat noodles make make it healthier um, and my kids have gotten accustomed to brown rice and whole wheat pasta it was just a process my family at first flopped and but then now they don't think twice they eat wild rice brown rice all whole wheat everything whole wheat bread. When we got married, white bread, Miracle Whip, those things were in our prenup. We're not coming out. You know, I was like, what is that? Because you know, I'd never eaten that way. So I want my children, I mean, I'm training them. I may make them whatever they want, but they're going to eat whole wheat noodles. So anyway, this is a, my family loves this recipe. And you can doctor it up however you want. Um, if you don't like mushrooms, you know, you can play with this recipe. It's, it's friendly with mixing um, different vegetables in there. And yeah, you don't have to put the red pepper if you don't want if it's too spicy. I, I, I've gotten where I love tomato sauce with red pepper, like a little spicy flavor. Okay, beer braised beef. Um, this is a chance to use round steak, which is you know a cheaper cut of meat, um, and it falls apart too. Uh, very tender. If you don't if you don't want to use alcohol, uh, just use non-alcoholic beer. It's fine. Or you, you could use uh, you know apple juice even for that matter. If, that, if you if you don't even want that taste um, in your mouth. 
uh, then you could switch it out with something else. Um, molasses, they, they sell that now, like grandma's molasses at the store. I get mine from a, a real farmer in Mississippi, but the store vault works fine too. Um, and white chicken chili. And I'm, I'm flying through these just so we can have time to demo, so we can get y'all out of here over time. But thank y'all for coming too from the Saturday. Um, this is my favorite one, white chicken chili. I love this recipe. I make it all the time. And um, this is one I adapted. If you, um, like I did on, I did last year on TV. I only knew how to make it on the stove, but now I figured out how to do it um, in the crock pot. So it's really good. It's that the cloves may throw you like there's cloves in here. I promise you, it gives it some depth of flavor. I would never have thought of, and I'm not a huge cloves person or whatever, but it works in this chili really, really well. And I just garnish it with um, a little bit of extra cheese. You can use, use reduced fat cheese. Um, my kids like that, a little chopped onion, that kind of thing. Okay, balsamic chicken. This one is fantastic. This is the highest rated recipe on um, skinnycrockpot.com. The, the most, the, the favorite of all recipes. And so I included it because it's different. You know, we think of doing soups and stews and that kind of thing, um, but we don't think about, I would not have thought that this would work, or you know, oh, what, how would this work? But this one is really, really good, and you just serve it over pasta. It's very simple. Um, you can use the boneless, skinless chicken breast here, um, and then you put the onions and herbs on top of it and that kind of thing, and, and balsamic vinegar just gives it great flavor. And, that, and over the hours, you slow cook my mouth's watering. <laughs> uh, over the hours you cook it, it just it just gets a deeper, deeper flavor. And you can cook it with pasta. I mean, serve with pasta or um, you know rice or something like that. Do you need to brine um, No, you don't. This one I, I didn't when I made this. Yeah, um, it, it works just fine, just like this. It would not hurt it to though at all. Um, and if I were if I were going to brine this one. I probably would stick with like apple juice. Um, I wouldn't do buttermilk or anything like that. I wouldn't do a milky brine. Like when I do fried chicken, I use buttermilk. I brine it in buttermilk, but I would stick with more of an acidic brine. Um, even just a little salt water, you know, would be good. Okay, chicken and wild rice soup is very self-explanatory. I love y'all. When I say wild rice, I'm not talking about the Uncle Ben's and a box wild rice. I'm talking about, I should have brought mine to show you, but I'll bring it this afternoon. Like the real stuff, you know, and it takes a little bit longer to cook. And this is an easy way um, that you don't have to worry about. It takes like over an hour for that stuff to cook when I'm cooking it for dinner. And it's so good. It's so like, where do you get it? Um, you can get it at Brookshire's or, um, I don't know if Walmart would have it or not. Brookshire's has it and like Drug Emporium has it. Um, I order it from Minnesota, but it's not even actually a rice. It, I just learned that it's actually a, a grain, but they call it because it looks like wild rice. But it's, huh. it almost looks like pine needle, dark, real sharp little grains, okay. and it takes forever to pop open. But it's got incredible texture, incredible flavor. Once you get used to it, I mean, white rice is is really boring, you know. But it, it's a, it's a different flavor profile. But this is just kind of a healthy or chicken chicken and rice soup using wild rice um, and it's really good okay and then I did Asian pork with whole wheat noodles and it's my mouth's okay. uh -huh. self-explanatory too you can switch this out um, you could do beef here it would work fine I've never done it with chicken um, but don't cut it into little pieces to do if you if you switch it out to chicken leave always leave your chicken in, in bigger pieces and then at the end pull it out shred it or cut it and put it back if you put little pieces in there it's not, I don't, it's not going to work, yeah, it's going to, or it's going to dry out, it's going to get tough really quickly, too, so, okay, and whole wheat noodles are easy to find now, or soba noodles, you've seen that, buckwheat noodles, the Japanese noodles would be good with it. All right, the last thing is the healthier caramel apple bread pudding, and this is what we're going to, I'm going to show you real quick if I can get some volunteers, and then I'll <coughs> let y'all sample everything before you go. This is, like I said, I just found this on Food Network, and the things that I adapted, um, I left the pecans out today because people have out nuts to allergies so much now that um, I didn't want somebody to not try it. So, but you can, but pecans would be good. I changed it to fat-free evaporated milk, and I changed it to fat-free half and half. I have found I can har I can really hardly tell the difference um, in those two products or full fat. I use fat-free half and half in my ice cream now. Um, I cook with it when I make my Alfredos at home. If you've seen the cooking segments we do um, on KDK, my, all those pasta dishes, that's fat-free half and half I'm cooking with. It's a little thinner. That's what you're sacrificing. It's a little bit thinner than the thick. But my gosh, you're saving in fat 
and cholesterol like crazy. I mean, you know. So, um, in fact, we evaporated milk is even better. It works. I mean, I don't, I don't really, I can't think of a single reason why I wouldn't use fat-free evaporated milk in everything I do, unless somebody's had a bad experience. 